Hello, well back to today's second video. We've already done the 5D forecast. You can find that video here on the home page. Just scroll down the page a little bit. And it's most so desk. There's also the written version. You can get to that from the buttons at the top of the page. So we're going to get this cold easterly spell setting up at the end of the week and into the weekend. It is going to get bitterly cold. And there could be some snow showers with that as well. Whilst the risk of um, more general disruptive snow has been reduced quite a bit uh, by the models overnight. Uh, we're going to get snow showers, particularly to the south and southeast, being brought in on these easterly winds. So there will be some snow around and it will be very cold over the weekend. Probably just a short, sharp shock. And I think next week we should should see the temperatures uh, staging a recovery. So we're going to extend out beyond the five day forecast um, period in a moment, extend out beyond kind of like beast from the east part two um, very shortly. So uh, that's what we get on with. And then we're going to have a look at the Bayesian Climate Centre, which I haven't done for a little while, uh, and see what that's showing, taking us into uh, April. But we begin uh, with uh, the GFS Ensemble. So we're looking at Birmingham uh, today. The red line here is the 30 year upper air temperature average. We're mild of an average at the moment. It's so more or less downhill all the way now with the upper air temperatures through to the end of the week. It won't really be until the weekend, though, that the plunge takes, pla uh, takes place. It's that uh, plunge just there. Again, go down to between minus 10 and minus 15 at 850 HPA, which is very cold, really, really cold, that is, for uh, sort of the second half of March. Quite uh, unusual to see the ensembles going that low. But as I say, it's quite a short, uh, sharp shock because next week, uh, quite quickly, those temperatures are recovering. So by the time you get through to the middle of next week, which is this period you see, uh, we've actually gone back a little bit above the 30 year average. And then beyond that, in the extended range, which is like the final week of March, we just keep the temperatures very close to average. It will be. Uh, an unsettled period coming up. As far as precipitation goes, so uh, we've got some rain coming up across the country tonight. It's already in the west and southwest at the moment. We detail that in the 5D forecast. But that rain will spread across the country tonight. So tomorrow will be quite a cloudy, wet day. And then probably some showery bursts into Friday as well. As we turn colder, it does turn drier, as it usually does when it gets cold. It uh, gets drier, but not completely dry. So there will be some, the risk of some snow showers coming through from the east during that cold weather. And then next week, very slowly, it's turning more unsettled again as the west to southwesterly winds begin to come back. This is how the surface temperatures are looking for Birmingham. So starting off quite mild for the next uh, two or three days. Then the plunge takes place over the weekend. So by weekend, we're talking about maximums, barely above freezing, really, just at that sort of level. Uh, and minimums going below freezing as well. Hard overnight uh, frost. Into the early part of next week, very slowly those temperatures begin to lift back. It takes a little while to get them there, but eventually by the end of next week, we are back close to around 10 degrees Celsius, which is kind of like uh, average, I would have thought, for Birmingham for a maximum afternoon temperature in the second half of March. Possibly just signs of a little bit of a sliding temperature again as we go through to the very end of the month. But that is really speculative. That's a, a very long way off indeed. Our temperature anomalies across Europe for the next week, going from the 14th to 22nd of March, are looking colder than average through all places, very reminiscent of what happened with bees from the East Part 1. Um, not quite to the same severity uh, with bees from the East Part 2, but nevertheless, still a really cold week coming up through most parts of Europe. You have to go right way down towards Black Sea uh, to find temperature anomalies a little bit above average. Precipitation anomalies look like that, so very wet across southern Europe. Many uh, parts of the Mediterranean, Portugal, Spain, through the Balearic Islands, into Corsica, Sardinia, over to Italy, over the Adriatic, into uh, Balkans. All those areas looking really quite uh, wet indeed, with above average precipitation. I mean, in northern Europe, though, significantly drier than average. So you can see where that high pressure weather block is going to be sitting. It's through Scandinavia, through Denmark, through uh, northern parts of Germany and Poland as well. Drier than average on the eastern side uh, of the uh, UK, a little bit wet than average still in the south and western side of the UK.
So that's how the GFS is picking things up for Sunday. Uh, when we're in this bitterly cold east with especially so in the south and southeast, it'll be a really bitter day there, and there will be more snow showers coming in. However, by Monday, that high pressure has already started to slip down across the country, cutting off the coldness of that easy wind. That's pushing down in towards France. And we just have light winds, and uh, I would have thought it's mainly dry by the start of next week. Maybe a few snow flows still left around the eastern coast, but a brief amount of dry weather. I expect hard night frost. And that continues into Tuesday as well. By Wednesday, the high pressure is slipping a little bit further south. We're starting to infiltrate Marderet around the top of the high to Scotland and to Northern Ireland. By the time we get through to Thursday, actually all parts of the country are going back into a milder west to southwesterly flow. And then that takes us up to day 10, where it starts to turn more unsettled again with low pressure coming back in from off the Atlantic. And eventually turns very unsettled as we get through towards the final stages uh, of the month, heading up to as far as we can go with the GFS, is taking us to Friday the 30th of March. Incidentally, that's Good Friday, and uh, Easter updates, or updates for Easter, uh, will be starting at Gasworth. It's very, very short. I think we begin those over the weekend when the whole of the Easter period is into the time frame of the GFS. Well, we're up to Good Friday already, so it's only a few more days to wait uh, before the entire Easter period from Good Friday to Easter Monday is uh, within the GFS time frame. But that's how he's talking for Good Friday on this particular run, wrong way off of the uh, GFS. Well, we're actually bringing down another cold northerly wind uh, this time, so maybe a chance of wintry showers there for Easter. Of course, it, as I always say, it's more likely to snow at Easter than it is at Christmas. It's a fact that a lot of people find very surprising, but it is true that we are more likely in the UK to see snow on Easter Day than we are on Christmas Day. So not necessarily saying this Easter will be cold, but if it was, it wouldn't be all that much of a surprise. This is how the uh, GM is looking for Sunday. We're bringing in that bitterly cold easterly wind and then uh, the high pressure slipping down over the country as we get through into the early part of next week, keeping it cold, but mainly dry with night frost, uh, night frost, and by day, temperatures wouldn't be too bad in the sunshine. By Wednesday, the west southwest is are starting to re-establish, and then that takes us up to day 10, where it turns increasingly unsettled, but the temperatures are recovering back towards average. So just a short, sharp shock uh, from the east, and then a recovery. That's how the ECMWF is looking. This is probably the best out of the three models for snow showers on Sunday, because we have got a stronger... Uh, easterly wind met across England away. So I would have thought that's blowing snow showers quite away inland uh, on Sunday. Same idea, though, as the other two models. The high pressure slips down over the country through the early part of next week, cutting off that easterly wind. It's still cold, but by day in the sunshine, because the sun is very strong now, getting into uh, almost up to the um, vernal equinox, of course, uh, when the sun will be on the equator. Uh, and then after that, the sun will be in our hemisphere. So the sun is rapidly strengthening. So despite that, the air mass is quite cold there. As we've cut off the easterly wind, um, by Tuesday, uh, temperatures by day would be uh, recovering even with that, for we've infiltrated any milder air in off the Atlantic. But at night, we would still be at risk of some quite hard night frost. And into the second half of next week, we re-establish the West Seas. That's proper mild spring-like air returning into the second half of next week. And then we go off and running into quite an unsettled spell of weather, taking us up to day 10, which is Saturday, 24th of March, where it's turning wet and windy. The uh, snow potential with that ECM UF run for the weekend uh, looks like this. So uh, this is from weather.us, the snow depth forecast. Remember, this overdoes the depths a little bit, but it gives you a good idea of where snow is likely to be falling anyway. That's how things look on Friday. Nothing really happening in terms of snow away from the Scottish mountains. That's how things look on uh, Saturday. And snow showers are beginning to move in towards northern and eastern parts of the country in particular. Let's go through to uh, Sunday. And you'll see the area where we've got risk of snow is expanding. Um, so we have got some snow cover across eastern and southeastern parts of the country and also across parts of the East Midlands as well. There could be some snow showers uh, moving through there. 
And then let's go on a little bit further to Monday. And you'll see there is just a general risk of snow showers pretty much across the whole country. This may be underestimated the depths a little bit around these eastern coasts. There might be more snow around those eastern coasts from the snow showers than the model is expecting. Also up here across the northeastern parts of England. Further inland, that might be about right. But you remember yesterday, the uh, ECMDF model was predicting quite a significant snow event on Sunday for England and Wales. It's not going for that now. So the snow that we do get over the weekend is more likely to be from snow showers as opposed to more prolonged uh, areas of snow uh, coming in. That's how things look by Tuesday. By that time, we're beginning already to start to uh, get rid of some of that snow. So we'll be we snow around over the weekend, but maybe not the uh, substantial snow event that looked possible uh, as we uh, looked at the models yesterday and the day before. If I just have a look at Bayesian Climate Center, I haven't looked at these charts for quite a long while. So these are the uh, 500 millibar height anomalies broken down into 10 day periods. The first 10 day period taking us from the 16th uh, through to 25th of March. We've got a bit of a blocking signal up to our north, and then we've got below average heights uh, underneath it, and it looks quite cold as well We're on the cold side of the jet stream. So quite cold and unsettled for uh, the coming 10 days. And then this is likely to continue if the model is right through to the next 10 day period. So this takes us from the 26th of March uh, through to the 4th of April. So this is going over the Easter period, and uh, it doesn't look great. We've got below average heights underneath this large uh, sort of blocking feature that we've got up here, the jet stream remains to ourselves. So, I mean, it'll be determining the detail, but in, as far as the broad range, long range model is concerned, there is the possibility there of some quite cold and unsettled weather somewhere around the Easter period. Uh, then the next 10 day period takes us from the 5th through to the 14th of April. Uh, so we've lost the blocking, that's the good news. It's still unsettled. Above average heights are down to our southwest. Low pressure below average heights is close to the UK. The jet stream is moving northwards as well. So it's a milder period then as we go further into April. Um, but also watch out for uh, quite a lot of unsettled weather. Then finally, we go through to the last 10-day period, which takes us from the 15th to 24th of April. And we start to build up an area of above average heights over the country with low pressure up to the northwest. That would send the jet stream to our north. And that's really real true spring setting in there uh, around the middle part of April. That would be our first pronounced and probably quite prolonged burst of um, quite dry and relatively warm weather coming up uh, as well, if that was right, because we go onto the mild side of the jet stream, we lift the jet stream north, and we build that ridge in close to the UK. That could be really uh, quite a nice 10-day period if it comes off, and that's a big if, because remember, that's days 31 to 40, so it's right at the very, very edges of uh, the model. Um, so let's just wait and see on that. But certainly up to Easter, it looks like we're at risk of more unsettled and at times maybe quite cold weather. And we are going to get this little mini sort of beast from the east over the weekend. We'll turn very cold for the time of year. And whilst we have downgraded the snow a little bit, we, it doesn't look like we're going to get that prolonged area of snow from, uh, through Sunday. Uh, we are still looking at snow showers, and they could be quite heavy and pronounced snow showers across uh, particularly eastern parts of England. So uh, that will be something to watch out for. Becoming less cold and then milder quite quickly next week. That's all for now. Thanks for watching.